Welcome back. We are starting uh, our video series on uh, using Paul Hewitt's uh, notes on physics. I think he does an excellent job and it'll help us in our study uh, with our textbook. Chapter one uh, deals a lot with the basics. So we're going to look at measurements, how to measure something uh, to where it's accepted by everyone scientifically how that most of the world is the patterns and relationships that things have is a mathematical relationship and then how do you go about treating those relationships scientifically so what is the scientific method uh, what is your attitude when you're approaching science and then what science is and what science is not so scientia is latin for know something okay it's the word for knowledge so if you know something about the world, then you have learned science. It's essentially the body of knowledge that everybody in the world accepts um, about a certain thing. Does it mean it's true? No, because for, for ages and ages, um, most people thought one thing or another that later on we developed a little more nuance or or found that it was just plain wrong what we had previously accepted. So it's ongoing. It always changes. And science is a very humble thing because even though that you make an assertion, very strong assertion, this is true. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it's true. It's what people understand at the time. Also, there are um, there are disputes within the scientific community and others that that would say one thing is more probable than another and it that's a healthy thing to, to talk and and even debate and argue this is a quote by Lord Kelvin he was um, the head of the British uh, scientific community in the into the 1900s he is credited for, in fact, we call Kelvin temperature after Lord Kelvin. He did a lot of work in heat. So uh, this quote's awesome. I often say when you can me measure something and express it in numbers, you know something about it. When you cannot measure it, when you cannot express it in numbers, your knowledge is out of a meager and unsatisfactory kind. It may be the beginning of knowledge, but you have a scarcity in your thoughts advanced to the stage of science, whatever it may be. So primarily science is something that you can test and measure. And then that data sits there and stares at you and makes you deal with it. And your theories and your ideas about how the world is working has to include all of what you see. You cannot ignore some and go with others to make you look good because it's not about you. If the whole world knows something, it's because scientists, one person or another, did work and was forced to deal with the data that they had. And if you do tweak it and, and uh, make it look good for you, if another person comes along and repeats your work, you're just gonna look like an idiot anyway. Okay, so it's a very humble thing. So measurement is interesting. There's there's way you can directly measure things, and then there's way you can indirectly measure things, and then there's some things that can't be measured, but you can figure them out. The distance to the sun, okay, can be determined. In fact, it was very very accurately determined um, uh, before Christ. Okay, that one of the Greek uh, f um, mathematicians was able to figure it out just using shadows. A cast on the ground with sticks. It's amazing uh, of just how close he got. And at, he was able to measure the diameter of the earth using this. So there can be, in, there can be direct and indirect measurements. So this is a cool picture of an eclipse. So um, the dappled light under a tree will show all of the round as it goes through like a pinhole of all the leaves crowded together you're going to get little suns okay during an eclipse you won't get round discs you'll get crescents and that's that's pretty cool you could look at a picture and as long as you know that's a real picture you could deduce what actually was happening this is what i alluded to a minute ago aristophanes 
okay, uh, which was a couple hundred years before Christ in Greek, uh, in Greece, was able to very, very accurately say the diameter of the earth. Now, that means that, that these ancient people knew that the earth was a globe, okay? Many people later thought the earth was flat because they had forgotten what we already knew. So if you forget something, it's no longer science. If you allow a whole generation to go without knowing anything about their world, you could lose what previous generations have gained. So this is amazing. This guy lived in Egypt, and because of that, he was right on the equator. And something very unusual happens at the equator. The sun is directly overhead. The sun is never overhead in West Virginia, but in Egypt, there are places right on the equator that the sun is directly overhead. So he went and he heard a story that at a certain town, not real far away from him, you could at high noon, you could look down a well and see the reflection of the sun. Somebody had told him this story uh, as they were traveling. Well, he looked down the well at high noon and he did not see the reflection of the sun because the sun was not directly over his head, it was close. So he found out what town that the, that the travelers had been to that supposedly the, the sun reflected down into the well. And he paid a guy to walk there and actually count his steps. So he got some guy who's like, do you want a job? I need you to walk to this town, okay? And however, however far away it was, and then investigate if it is true that at high noon you can see the, the sun's disc at the bottom of the well. So the guy counted his steps, and very, very carefully counted his steps, and he found out that you could see the, the reflection of the sun in the well. He didn't know what was such a big deal about it, but he found out, and he went back and reported to the guy who had hired him. When he realized that he couldn't see the reflection, but somewhere so many steps away could see the reflection, he simply did geometry and was able to determine the circumference of the world, and it was really, really close.